The safety guard is preset at the factory, but you may need to adjust it so it can fully protect your fingers during operation. Always make sure the grinder is unplugged before adjusting the safety guard. To adjust the safety guard, first loosen the set screw slightly. Then push the guard into the desired position, making sure it fully protects your fingers from the chainsaw disc. Finally, re-tighten the set screw. Just be sure not to over-tighten it. The slit or opening in the safety guard does not have to be completely closed, or the two sides pulled together for the guard to be tight and secure. Remember, always make sure the guard cannot move freely before turning the grinder on. Always make sure the grinder is unplugged before changing the disc. First, insert the hex key into the center screw in the middle of the grinder's head. Press the locking button on the underside of the grinder and simultaneously turn the hex key counterclockwise. The locking button will click down to let you know the screw is loosening properly. Once the screw is out, remove the attachment washer and any disc already in the grinder. Put the screw and washer into the middle of the new disc and align the screw with the hole in the middle of the grinder's head. To lock the disc into place, press the locking button while simultaneously turning the hex key clockwise to tighten the screw. Remember not to over tighten it. Make sure the disc is secure and cannot fall out before turning on the grinder. Always make sure that the safety guard is positioned to fully protect your fingers before turning the electric hoof knife on. For the most control over the tool, it is easiest to lightly grip the grinder just below the gear head with the tool resting on your fingertips. This will help the grinder feel balanced in your hand. Avoid blocking the air vents and try not to press the locking button while trimming, as this can cause the disc to chatter. Always make sure the grinder is switched off before you plug it in. Always wear eye protection and heavy-duty gloves while trimming. The four-tooth chainsaw disc rotates at 13,000 RPMs and throws off almond-shaped slivers at high speeds that can hurt your eyes if you're not wearing proper eye protection. When you're using the electric hoof knife, one of the important things is to make sure that you have a grounded extension cord. There's two ways that you might go about doing that. Number one is that if you have a GFI plug in your barn, you want to make sure that you're using that. If not, we suggest that you get a GFI extension cord plug. You can get them at uh, local home improvement stores. They're fairly inexpensive, but you do want to be able to have that cord. For safety reasons, GFI, that's the only way to go with the extension cord. When you're using the electric hoof knife, cord management is going to be a big part of setting up your work area. We've got the cord plugged into the GFI. Now it's time to place the cord outside of your work area. So I want to take this cord and take it on the way outside and bring it back up through the middle. That puts, places me between the cord and the horse. That's the safest way to be able to set up your cord. If you, if, when it's time to trim the back side of the horse, you'll want to make sure you turn the horse around and not Take your cord around and behind the horse. Safety first. So I would assume you missed the same thing in goats. Your, our foot's actually rolling. See, it's got a rolled over on this outside. You can tell how the foot's it's, it's big in here and then it's rolled under here. Periodically trimming this goat, you'll get her set back. That horn will start to grow back like it should be formed, and it'll set that foot back down where she's carrying her natural weight bearing. We're gonna clean the heels up right here. Try to get her back. Try to get her. She, she doesn't have a real wide foot. She's got a lot of heel in it. 
Don't try to set her back down. Well, she's going to be walking flat, bearing her weight back flat. Take these rough edges off of it. Where she's got this white line separation, you can tell it come down to the end of the toe. She's got a lot of overgrown hula. You can hear it there where it's not hitting solid. Trim her now, give her six, eight weeks, go back in there and trim her again. But this is so much easier. And we hadn't drawn the first bit of blood. But she's flat now, and if she doesn't have any, she doesn't have any of her white lines, or it may look like there's a little crack right there, but it's all solid down in between, which will help cut out the separation of the, of the foot. It's a lot easier to level the foot with this tool. Uh, in the fact, when she's standing like this, she goes from heel to toe. From horses, to sheep, cows, goats, and more, proper hoof health is an important aspect of caring for an animal. When people begin to domesticate the animals, they also begin to take them out of their natural habitat. In a natural habitat, the animals basically take care of their hooves just through natural wear and tear. If you have a, a beef cow that's on the range, they're able to wear that hoof down as they roam through the fields. But a dairy cow, on the other hand, is confined. Their feed is a highly enriched protein, so their hooves grow faster than normal. And because of the fact that they do not have the ability to wear it down, you have to trim that hoof. Cows and horses and sheep and goats and pigs, 
anything with a hoof that's confined has to have the hoof trimmed by man. While extremely important to their overall health, hoof trimming can be a demanding and strenuous task. A lot of people in the United States maintain their own horses. The problem with a horse owner that's trimming his own, it basically gets back to it's hard to keep the hand tools sharp and it is extremely hard physically to make those cuts on that hoof. And so unfortunately what happens is that a, an owner will sometimes delay trimming that hoof. Proper hoof care dictates that you should trim that horse's hoof every six weeks. But because it's so hard to do, people delay that. And when they delay that, then they really are subjecting that horse to problems with their hoof. The performance of the horse is declined. It leads to the hoof getting diseased. So what my tool does is it encouraged the horse owner to trim more frequently because it's so much easier to do. Less material, less time, less effort, healthier horse. DeWolf & Associates, creators of the electric hoof knife, have made the first and only power tool to be designed, manufactured, and successfully marketed to the hoof trimming industries around the world. My tool, using a four-tooth chainsaw blade, is still used exactly like a hand tool. The bonus to our tool is the fact that it cuts in any direction. With a hand tool, you basically can only cut in one direction, and that is a pulling motion towards you. With my tool, you can cut forwards, backwards, sideways. It just gives you a lot more cutting ability to do that. The electric hoof knife is a revolutionary tool. Our tool was designed with four elements in mind. The shape, the size, the weight, and the power. We had to design a tool that had the ability to remove material off of a hoof. And in some cases, that material is as hard as concrete. We had to be able to have a tool that was powerful enough that we could remove that material, but at the same time, it couldn't weigh more than one pound. If it weighed more than that, you couldn't effectively hold it for long periods of time to be able to use the tool. The shape of the tool has to fit your hand and also the size of the tool. It's a real close quarter work, so you could not have tools that was a real long. Animals have their own different but somewhat similar needs when it comes to hoof trimming. Every animal has uh, a different requirements because of, of the way the hoof is shaped. A cow's hoof is, uh, it has two toes and it's flat. It's very easy to remove material off of that because there's really nothing that impedes that you're moving that chainsaw disc across that. It's a flat surface. A horse, on the other hand, is an uh, area where the hoof is in a uh, U-shape, just like you, you, you see a horseshoe, and in the middle of it, it's called a frog. Well, you have to work around that piece. It's, uh, you don't cut on the frog, so uh, you're confined. Um, you have to be very uh, precise when you trim against that piece. Uh, you have to work the hoof wall on the outside. So there's a lot of different variables to that. So we can use a, the, the chainsaw blade. The chainsaw blade is the primary trimming disc that we have. We developed that for use in the dairy industry and then, then we realized that what we had done was that we had developed a tool that could be used with the right attachment on any animal. It's just a better job. Um, a lot of horses that you have, they, you really can't get out what you need to with the hoof knife that you can get out with the electric hoof knife. The electric hoof knife, you can tape and you can cup them out 110% better than you can with the knife because of the hardness of the sole and the hardness of the shell. And you can do a better job. You can do a lot of things with this that you can't do the old way. The hand tool that people use for the goat industry is a pair of shears like you would use in a garden. And uh, the problem with that is that it's very uh, intense, uh, very hard to use to cut that hard material, your hands hurt. 
Uh, I developed a blade that can be used to remove that material through abrasion. With the goats and sheep, one of the problems they have is by using a hand shear, they leave ridges between the bottom of the goat's hoof, which they call the pad, and where the hoof wall is at. When you use a pair of shears, you're not able to get it smooth right there at the point between the hoof material and the pad. That leaves areas that contaminants can get into, and that leads to foot rot. My tool, because it's an abrasive type removal, takes that down to where it's very smooth and doesn't leave any areas for that to happen. So we really do eliminate a lot of the hoof rot problems that the goat and the sheep people have. The natural thing for any uh, uh, hoofed animal would be to be on rock or something that would keep their hooves trimmed to a normal uh, length. And of course we don't have that with the clay and the sand here. So by us trimming them and keeping them at a normal, smooth, what their actual hoof should look like, it's much uh, safer for them and they won't develop any limps or any problems with their hips or their legs. I also will schedule trimming a little more often because it's so much easier. And there's a lot less stress on the goats. They're up there, we get them trimmed in minutes and then they're down and off and they haven't even finished their bowl of food, so they're happy. On six month old colts, all the way up to 30 year old horses, I've never quicked an animal with this tool. Now all horses are different, I understand that, but most horses, after you work this machine on them once or twice, they all agree with it. It ain't real loud, it's real smooth, there's no hand pressure, there's no hard working it, if you would just hold the machine there real lightly, the machine will do its own job. You can rest the chainsaw blade on a hoof and it won't cut unless you put a little bit of pressure on it. So because of that, it is extremely controllable because the tool is not fighting the user. Once you've gotten to the point where you're using it quite often, then you get to a point where it's basically the only tool that you need. It's probably the friendliest thing that I've found to use on a goat or on our kettle to treat abscesses and ulcers. On the heels of the feet on the goat and where they're soft, it, it, it bulged up like a marshmallow. We were just scared we was gonna cut them, get too much of it. And with the electric hoof knife, you can go in and ease it off. It's almost like using a, a surgical tool when you get to taking out the ulcer side around, you can go in and feather it out you're not as likely to get too deep in there and get into the corium of the foot. You can clean the radius out a lot better around the foot. With an abscess, you can go in. When you have a honeycomb shell, you can go in and clean all of this out. It leaves a nice job. So we hadn't cut one with it, and that, that's, that's helped us. We've, we've trimmed some goats today at a show and carried them to the show ring with it. I've even started my 11-year-old daughter. She wanted to know could she trim them, and I told her yes, sir. Uh, you know, you, them, they're your show goats, so you need to learn how. It's made it so much easier on us. Because of the ease of use, the tool enables individuals suffering from joint and muscular ailments to trim hooves with ease and control, unlike ever before. People with arthritic hands, lumus, and bad backs, it has really helped them because there's no strain on your body when you're using it. Um, their backs. I have people tell me all the time that their backs are not sore, their hands don't cramp anymore. For women, it has really been a changing experience for them because most women have not been able to use a manual hoof knife. They just, they just don't have the strength to do it. And our tool is uh, very easy, very comfortable for them to use. So I see it opening a new career for women in farriers and hoof trimming because with this tool they'll be able to do it themselves. And people every day send us emails and write us letters and phone calls thanking us for coming up with this, for introducing this to the market. How it has absolutely changed their life as it concerns trimming. Um, a lot of older people um, in their 60s, 70s, 80s use this tool. 
they don't want to quit taking care of their animals. But physically, they've gotten to the point where they just can't do it with a hand tool. So this tool is a revelation of, uh, of use. And the more that people understand the tool and the more people use the tool, it's going to continue to grow in use. That's what encourages me is the fact that we've developed a tool that really is a tremendous asset for the animal. It really does promote better hoof health for the animal. But it also promotes the health of the end user, the people that are actually using that tool to, to accomplish that job. For more information, please visit www.electrichoofknife.us or call 877-320-820.